The, nec the next talk uh, will be by Dominic Gorge and Mark Gabriel yeah. on uh, Debian Edo Skull Linux. Yeah. Welcome uh, to our talk. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, uh, as you already heard in the introduction, we will be talking about Debian Edo. Who of you has already heard about the Debian Edo project? Very cool. Okay, who of you has heard about Skoda Linux? Okay. <laughs> For those who haven't or who uh, can you use a small refreshment on, uh, on what this is. Debian EDU is uh, a project inside, inside Debian. It's a, it's a pure blend um, and it cares about everything that has to do with the use of, of Debian in, um, in schools and, and in education in uh, several regards. Um, first of all, uh, Debian EDU offers uh, um, um, pre-configured ins installation media that can be used to install and, uh, and operate a full fully featured um, educational network for schools, both for operating servers, which including uh, all the nice things like managing uh, host and group uh, groups of computers uh, for computer labs, for example, users, um, access rights for the users, um, and stuff around that, like uh, doing, uh, doing backups, having uh, internal email for the users, stuff like that. Um, and also, uh, which is probably the most important part, uh, network boot environment, so uh, computer labs can be booted over the network using PXE or can be installed over the network. And on top of that, there's a desktop environment that is uh, that can be installed pre-configured to work uh, very well with this, with this network. And it offers uh, quite a huge set of educational software that uh, can be used by, uh, in, in the different, different subjects at, at school from, uh, yeah, starting from uh, uh, from informatics, of course, but uh, also office, uh, an office suite, um, educational software for geography, biology, uh, chemistry, and uh, uh, all that. I think. Do you know how many packages are presented? I think it's. I'm not so good at statistics. Yeah. So <laughs> I think it's uh, something around 100 that are pre-selected, and of course. As it is, uh, as it basically is, it is uh, just Debian. Um, of course, there are tons of other packages for educational use available. Today, we want to mainly talk about what uh, um, what will what we in what we intend to happen to uh, Debian Edu this year or in the foreseeable future, what has already happened, give a small update about what, uh, what, happened, what happened in the past. And to, uh, to get started with that, um, we will start by telling a bit about uh, different groups of people who uh, are interested in Debian Edu, or maybe should be, or sadly aren't yet, <laughs> who knows. Um, Mike, can you tell a bit about the development of Skull Linux and what is, uh, what is special about it, what makes it special inside Debian and what uh, developers do, what we care for? Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm one of the Debian developers, uh, the Debian, ed yeah, two, but uh, on of the Debian Edu developers. And there are other people here in the room that actually receive our highest appreciation. One of them is actually Wolfgang, who has been keeping the development up for the last three years. Then it's Holger who is sort of involved in everything and also in Debian Edwin is doing a great job as a release manager. So um, the, the main thing for the last like two years we have to mention is that Debian Edu is really, has really traveled back inside Debian. So it was some overlay thing with extra packages outside of Debian for quite a few years and the release cycle of Debian Edu was sort of laid back in comparison to Debian. So at the moment it's like there is the 
first release of the next Debian stable and the, with the first point release, or the second at the latest, you have the Debian Edu system ready for installation. So, and um, I guess that's Holger and Wolfgang who mainly earn the credits. So, if you want to clap your hands, that's the point you should do. Thank you. Um, and, and also, um, over the years that I've sort of either contributed or observed the Debian Edu development, it's, it's really like chasing a moving target all the time. So, it's, it's, it's um, quite a hard job to actually sort of follow up what is changing in Debian over a release cycle. And then the freeze comes and then you have like four weeks or up to eight weeks maybe to actually put the last jigsaw pieces together and get the system up and running so that you put in your ISO image or your USB stick and install from that and then uh, you mainly have something like a small business server for a school. So, um, so plans for technical plans for development. Um, so at the moment on the school level or the municipality level in different counties of, all over Germany, um, you have the challenge, or they, they actually give the challenge to us to um, not set up an insular school system at one school, but they want to actually connect their schools, have a user identity management system across the municipality or even across the county. And we are not ready for that, but we are looking at it on a technical level to um, actually hook different Scola Linux installation together either with another Scola Linux installation as a master server or a dual master server setup, or what is quite common at the moment is that uh, the um, Univention people with their UCS at school product, they actually have a foot, have their foot in the, on, the, on the county level. So the um, educational ministries, they sort of get in touch with Univention, get to know the UCS server and start deploying an identity management system for teachers and students. And they are interested, and we are interested, actually, on hooking those two systems together, like the Skull Linux system being a slave machine for a county-wide or municipality-wide UCS. Anything else development-wise that we should mention here? OK. Yeah? Good. Thank you. So, um, there's obviously one, uh, one group of people who are interested in uh, school Linux as, as users, which are, uh, which are teachers. And, um, yeah, you, you know how that goes. Um, teachers have lessons to do, they uh, have to prepare lessons, they run their lessons, and sometimes they uh, want to do those new shiny digital things. Sometimes they even do and don't only want to do. And <laughs> then, uh, most important thing for teachers is that uh, they are offered a system that um, that simply works. There's no there's no time for uh, digging around uh, in the system, making making something work, trying endlessly whether something will will be fine uh, at the end and. Um, they just want to basically enter the computer lab, uh, sit a class down, boot machines, uh, have them log in and, it, and, and the system works. And uh, sometimes there's uh, qu quite a big difference between what developers think works and what users think works. Sometimes there's even a bigger difference in what teachers think w works. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, one of the important things that uh, um, at the at the point where where we as a developing community go uh, come together with with schools is finding out uh, what they want what 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 issues they have and uh, tailoring the system to to the special needs oh. yeah. Uh, yeah students <laughs> are using the system as well they are using they are used to um, mostly used to uh, Windows desktops or sometimes Mac OS or their, their smartphones. There are uh, some, uh, there's, there are some, some issues that are, that, that are new, to, new to me, that, uh, that there are new issues every year. I work with many children uh, and, and adolescents uh, in, in different projects and 
I think uh, one interesting story is uh, when that uh, like 10 years ago when I started, no more, uh, 12 years ago when I started giving lessons to children, they, uh, there was half of a classroom that uh, did not use a computer on a regular basis at home. Then two years later, everyone was using a computer on a regular basis at home. And they all knew their way around, basically. They could use mou a mouse and a keyboard, they could basically write text in an office application. And um, what, what in, in that regard, there was basically refinement of, these, of this knowledge going on. And <laughs> uh, for a few years now, I have been stumbling across students uh, in fifth or sixth grade or something, and they are uh, about to type something on the computer and uh, tell them, yeah, there, is a, there are spaces missing in your code. And you say, uh, what is a, they ask, what is a space bar? And this is because they <laughs> this is this is because they um, they are used to their smartphones. They type in a word, and it's just auto correction and auto completion, and then it yeah. And uh, the user interface is changing, <laughs> and maybe this is also uh, a difficulty that will that will become bigger. And uh, in that regard, and in uh, some more regards, it's very important to also listen to students when it comes to a, to a system um, deployed and, and used at schools. Yeah. So Mike will well, I guess tell you a bit me. about. Huh? Yes, that's I guess a, that's, that's me. <laughs> what? This? Okay. This? Okay. No. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, about the support system. Um, IT at school used to be something for one or two teachers. If you were lucky, you were two of you. There were two of you who could set up a network, one server, and some workstations. I think this time has passed. So IT at schools. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't fix your sink. You would call a plumber. So, if the computer lab is broken, you normally these days you call an IT company and um, and promoting Scola Linux um, in Germany means that there needs to be at some point we need to be really quick setting up a support structure. And um, in former times there was a Scola Linux certificate. So if you wanted to become a Scola Linux admin administration company or admin on a personal level. Um, you had to obtain your certificate, and there were coachings, consulting sessions, uh, training sessions for those companies providing professional support. We are thinking about reviving that. We have in northern Germany, we have a couple of schools, and um, there was one company w that was doing first level support that was supervised by me. And at the moment, there are more companies coming in, and um, I am about to start a, a like third level support concept. Uh, so that you can book my company, or actually myself as a person, to support Scola Linux. And I think um, and, and that, that we need, if you want to facilitate people using free software at schools, we need to sort of uh, consolidate that on a highly professional level, in fact. And this is something that you might be talking in, in two minutes about as well. Um, yeah, so um, we need to think about professionalism here and get people into Scola Linux in terms of how to configure that system because it's not Debian, it's different. I think it's for you. Yeah, that's me too. Um, brief history. So uh, I came to Scola Linux in 2011 and that was at a quite, well, it was quite difficult point of time. Actually, there was a a countywide solution in one of the more southern counties in Germany that sort of, well, the overall result was it failed because there was a lot of work done for Scola Linux, or with Scola Linux actually, and it ended up with none of that being upstream back to Debian. So, um, and we also had the observation that there was the international team, which was like the developers hanging around on hash Debian Edu on IRC and on the Debian Edu English mailing list. And there was a, say, marketing group in Germany at least, not sure about other countries, that attended Linux days and set up a booth there and talked about Scola Linux. And these two groups, they sort of got actually, they, they diverged. They 
well, there was the, the, there was a lack of communication at some point. Um, and I think here and also with previous meetings, um, we are about to change that because the Skoda Linux representation in Germany has just been moved over to the TechEats uh, NGO in Germany. And and we have two developers, Debian developers there, one Debian Edu developer, which is Nick, um, so that the what was sort of split apart a bit, has been split apart, is now actually rejoining again, which is really, really good. Okay, so um, at the end of last year, um, yeah, uh, things, I have to be honest on the, uh, uh, re regarding uh, regarding the use of uh, of school Linux um, Debian Edu and um, publicity uh, and the community support community meetings everything looked uh, very sad and that's why uh, we started an effort to re revive some things and what we uh, what what happened this year I'm running out of time so I have to hurry <laughs> hurry a bit sorry. Um, uh, the community coordination was transferred to an, an uh, NGO, Tickets EV. Some of you might heard about it. There's also a lightning talk scheduled for uh, yeah later. And um, we care about uh, many things concerning education and uh, and free software. And what we want to do is what Mike already said. We want to bring these different groups, the users, uh, people who support uh, the system. Uh, People who uh, who pre present the software, the, the project at um, at conferences, and the developers uh, in Germany and other countries, we want to bring them closer together, which uh, has started to work quite well. There have been uh, there have been meetings in the past with uh, um, in, in in Norway that we attended, and uh, here at Dep at, at, at DepConf, and yeah, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, we have updated a website. There's a nice la landing page for people who are looking for a product because that's uh, maybe one important catchword. Because, pardon? Which website are you updated? Yeah. It will be, yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, teachers or uh, uh, people who, uh, who who make decisions for the use of software in schools, um, they don't want a wiki and a mailing list and some something that they want. They want to find a product of something that looks like a product, and that is uh, one thing that we want to uh, want to move the presentation uh, the direction we want to move the presentation to. And we started doing surveys with uh, the companies who once offered support for Diamond Edu and with some schools, how they use it, um, which is uh, in, in, in quite an early stage. I hope that we will be able to present uh, successful details about that uh, at, at a later conference. Yeah. Okay. For those of you who are interested in education and children and free software in general, uh, you're welcome to attend the lightning talk where I will give a few details about what TechEdge does uh, together with children. We are uh, very eager to uh, integrate children in the free software community. Normally there would uh, uh, have been some kids around here as well, but this didn't work out because uh, the travel and, and, and school and all of, all of that. If you're interested, just attend the lightning talk. Okay, just, <laughs> just a picture of <laughs> all the children interested in Debian and free software at some conference. Yeah. Okay. So, um, goals for 2018, bring the all the groups together. Uh, on a technical level, do you want to say, repeat some words again? Yeah. So, uh, one goal I forgot, and one person I forgot to mention is Phil Hans. Phil Hans is a DD as well. He is here at the conference and he's trying to get the Debian Edu installer into the Debian installer sort of workflow thing so that we actually, we used to be, we used to build the Debian Edu ISO images on a separate machine and it was always a bit tricky. So we hope for the Buster release that we have that in the Debian installer build environment and that Debian builds the Debian Edu installer CDs. So that's one release, uh, one goal for, for 2018. Another goal is um, that we want to promote the remote desktop part in Debian Edu a bit more, um, so that one, one outstanding feature that other products at the moment don't have is 
that you can remote log on to your system from home as a teacher and test what you want to do in class in the evening before on the same system, hardware, software, especially um, compared to what you have in school. So that is one issue that's always breaking. They prepare stuff at home and have different network conditions and different operating systems. And then they are in class and then it takes 15 minutes to set up what they want to show or it doesn't work at all. So that's one thing, remote desktop, that we will integrate. Um, and it's, it's an outstanding feature, not available in other products at the moment. Anything else? Wolfgang. We want to secure the file system level a little bit more. So we will, talk, we will not talk about that here, but um, there needs to be some work done. Okay, it's not yet ready. It needs work. Okay. So, uh, most important thing, uh, every project always needs, needs help. Um, both in the, uh, in, the in the development parts, but also in the community efforts. We need uh, people who are interested in, uh, in doing some support, in, in, in promoting uh, Debian, Edu, and School Linux, or, uh, and even um, free software and education in general. If you are in interested in that, uh, maybe just talk to one of us uh, today or whenever you like. There are two mailing lists, one, uh, one for, the, for the Germany efforts, with, uh, which is uh, more support and community coordination and less development. And the general English-speaking list, Debian Edu, uh, is, yeah, it's, it's, it's more about, about uh, development and, and technical stuff. Yeah. Also about if support. you are interested in the, in the community side and the presentational side and promotion and uh, community, um, you will find details about how to contact Tekkits uh, on the Tekkits website. So um, there are many, many ways you can help. Um, one, one, one word yeah. about the German mailing list. Um, yeah. We made the observation yesterday that the technical level on the mailing list was a bit, well, the ar there were questions and no answers or people answering other people that did not really have insight in Debian Eidos, so which is okay, but what, what especially I put on my agenda is that, that I provide support on the German list a bit more than I used to do. So, um, so that we actually raise the niveau on the mailing list and also the frequency of posts and uh, the response time to posts from, from users. And the other thing is that um, it's also the channel for organizational stuff around School Linux now. So, okay. and so, that's uh, what Nick is doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, for more ways how to support free software and education in general, uh, again, a reference to the Lightning Talk. And yeah, so uh, time is over, I think. So thanks for attending and listening. And have a nice meet. <laughs> Are there questions or comments? Just one comment, which is not so much about Debian Edu, but about other blends. Because we tried to get a, build a Debian Edu um, installation image, and in Debian, that we might create the tra traditional way, but the other question sol unsolved from the stretch release is having a blends installer CD in Debian. There was some effort, but then it was too late because the batch was frozen. Buster freezes in half a year, so we have half a year to make blends installable in Debian. If somebody's interested, please pick it up. So that is blends in general, all blends. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. yeah. Yes, a general question. In which countries is currently Scholar Linux used nowadays? Uh, because I, I know that there's some other uh, or at least there's some other educational institutions that were created years back. I don't know the status in different countries across Europe. Is our, so currently, where is Scholar Linux actually used more? In Germany, Norway, other countries also? That's a good question, in fact. Do we have, there was, there was on the old Scholar Linux website, there was a collecting database and schools could, you know, put their names on and then they didn't remove their names. So, so in fact, that's something we should put on our to-do yeah. list to get an overview here. Yes. So <laughs> there are a few schools in northern Germany that I know of, um, a few schools, schools in North and Westphalia, some in Rhineland-Pfalz probably, some in Oslo I know, or they do like 
they, they learn from the techniques in Debian Edu, but use a plain Debian system to set that up. So there's a lot of uh, school and Linux stuff going on in, in Greece at the moment. So uh, Algis did a talk at the DebConf in Montreal, which was really impressive. They had loads of dots on the map where a Linux with LTSP, a Debian with LTSP was deployed. So, um, but I can't really answer your question, I'm sorry. So same kind of question about the support and the organization around Skull Linux. Do you know of any other uh, kind of organization like the one you described, like your company who is doing support but in Germany? And Tech Kids, it, is it German also? It's, or? An, NGO. Yeah. it's an NGO, yeah. So um, I, I'm doing that really as a business thing. So you can contract me for third level, second level, first level support. The first level support I will hand over to a partner company. Um, at the moment, you do it on an NGO level, so you sort of write invoices to the schools and then you yep. use it for the association or for, well, maybe also have contracts with individual persons. If you're a school, you can also contract or address me if you want a certain feature and you want that in Debian, like a new software that is free software but don't get packaged, then it's also, it could be an idea that you address me, either I package it for you or I know someone in Debian who's already working on that and we sort of, you know, dispatch that. Um, also, there are some companies on the wiki, so maybe you want to mention yeah. them. Um, there is, uh, on, the, on the Debian wiki, there's, there's an area for, for Debian EDU, um, which is also linked on the, on the German School Linux website and I think the School Linux NO and schoolnews.org point there. And there's a list of uh, professional support with uh, quite a big list of companies all over the world who do support for Debian EDU. Uh, we are just working on, um, on, uh, on cleaning, uh, on, on, on tidying up the, the list for the German companies. Uh, because uh, it is very outdated. I think this is also true for the other countries. Uh, we know of uh, three companies throughout Germany who's, uh, who gave us feedback that they are uh, or will be actively supporting uh, the system on a professional level. The, the problem is if you have been a Scholar Linux supporter like four years ago and then now someone approaches you and says, I want Scholar Linux support, it's a completely different system, different user management, now with Kerberos, blah, blah, blah. So. Um, so, so I really, I, I really want to invite those companies that want to support Skolinux to get in touch with, f firstly, the developer group on hash Debian Edu or on the Debian Edu English mailing list, or contact either of us and see how actually an interaction can happen. So just doing it and then promising Debian Edu will work for your, for a certain customer and then it fails, that is not good for the project reputation. Okay, sorry, time's up. Thanks again.